previously on Uno Dose of Trace. There's really, really big questions that the standard model does not answer. We will increase five times the rate of collisions and 10 times the recorded data. Increasing the amount of data we're getting per second, it taxes everything. So you guys are like, here's some more beam, and then they're like, oh my god, we gotta do all this data. That is exactly <laughs> what's going on. <laughs> and so we're driven to try to, to try to find what's wrong. It's a potential window to new physics, but we, we don't know. We don't know. So we have to measure it as precisely as possible, and for that you need lots and lots and lots of data. The Large Hadron Collider is shut down for upgrades and repairs. During this LS2 or Long Shutdown 2, the engineers, experts, postdocs, physicists, and staff of CERN are busy building the high luminosity LHC. The HL LHC is going to crank the LHC up to 11. Five times more particle collisions, ten times more data about the subatomic particles that make up our universe, ten times more fun. <laughs> but if they make all these collisions and they don't have a way to capture that data, then it's kind of a big fail. So in part two of this mini-series, about the long shutdown, I got the chance to dig into one of these major projects to get an idea of just how much goes into detecting one little particle. This is the new small wheel. The small wheel is the center of a five-story machine called Atlas, one of the detectors that helped discover the Higgs boson back in 2012. Atlas is 45 meters long, 35 meters tall, and weighs as much as the Eiffel Tower. It sits in a cavern 100 meters below the border of France and Switzerland. This behemoth is engineered with micro-precision to detect fragments of the smallest bits of our universe, and the small wheel sits right at the center of it. But really, when you break it down, Atlas is an overlapping set of smaller detectors for fragments of atoms that are smashed together at the center. And though it's only 11 years old, it's already out of date. The small wheel needs to be replaced to cope with the massive increase in collisions and data expected out of the high luminosity LHC once it's been upgraded. Like Queen Beyonce sang, partner, let me upgrade you. Upgrading a 10 meter section of a detector so it can do its job 10 times better, using only the space left behind by the old detector, that takes a lot of design. Which means going to the office of mechanical engineer Konstantinos Yakovides. Here you can see that around the small wheel, there are other detectors that should be installed. Yeah. You see, and with this way, what we do, we identify what is the envelope that we have available for design something or install something. Oh. So this is the envelope, mm -hmm. right? So we have to fit everything inside this space. Yeah. So this space is defined by the people working here to the design office, and they give us the available space that we have to install our things. Things actually covers a lot here. This big blue circle is just the skeleton of the new small wheel. Within this skeleton has to go power cables and boxes, networking cables, cameras for alignment, wires for detectors, not to mention the actual detectors themselves. Whew, it's a lot. It's a very, very precise job. The very delicate work is the electronics. So we have also to install in certain places and to the allowed space, because all the allowed space that we have comes from the other equipment that already exists in the Atlas detector. This is one of the, uh, of, uh, the most, let's say, excited thing working for. You have to apply everything from the computer to the reality. So to transfer everything and all the precision, because this was done by the, the engineers. Koss likes the word precision because they can't be off, even by a little bit. Remember, this is supposed to detect the broken bits of atoms and they cannot miss even one particle. There is nothing that can pass from inside there without being detected. So everything it is, uh, let's say, uh, with a precision of 100 microns. So it's very, very complicated because we have plenty of services, plenty of cables, cables plenty of uh, other, uh, let's say, uh, detectors around the small wheel that everything should close in such a way that the particles does not pass uh, from the, uh, an empty space. And we speak about particles. Huh? Yeah. It's very, very tiny. <laughs> 100 microns. That's like the thickness of a sheet of paper. That's how precise they have to be for something this big. And did I mention there are actually two of these? But these skeletons still need to be filled with the actual detectors. The most common are called STGC detectors, or small strip thin gap chambers. But the new small wheel also has a new kind of detector called micromegas detectors. And like a lot of the stuff that I saw at CERN, they were hand built. Yeah, 
from scratch. MicroMegas is an acronym for Micromesh Gaseous Structure. And this is Paulo Iango, he's the CERN physicist in charge of the new small wheel MicroMegas. Uh, essentially, this is a, a gas detector, so it is based on the having a, a gas inside a gap that uh, is ionized as soon as a, a particle, charged particle traverses the gas. It uh, uh, has uh, two main uh, components, uh, always defined by the, uh, what happened in the gas. From few electrons, you end up with uh, 10,000 more electrons at the end. Those 10,000 electrons give us an electrical signal that is large enough to be detected. Paulo is really smart, and this gets really complicated really fast, but I'll try and simplify it as much as I can. It seems to me that there are charged layers of material that can track and detect a particle, specifically a muon, as they fly by. If you want more detail than that, here we go. Pretty much all fragments of particles are charged, and since physicists know that, they design detectors to take advantage of it. In this case, the MicroMegas detector is flooded with gas when it's running. When a particle flies through, it ionizes the gas, giving it a charge, and that releases just a few electrons. Not enough to detect, though, because the system itself is using electricity. You have to get above that signal-to-noise ratio. So these few electrons have to be amplified. The holes in the steel mesh are so small that they let the electrons through, and on the other side are these tiny pillars, about 120 microns tall. The pillars are electrons Electrified. So when those few extra electrons show up from the ionized gas, whizhoo, the electrical field multiplies and they know right where the particle was. Whizhoo, technical term, by the way. With this detector, we can uh, detect particles uh, with an efficiency which is close to 100%. Uh, and uh, we can even uh, track particles, which means we can uh, measure the impact point of the particle with the precision which is of the order of 100 microns. And this whole system is inside the center of Atlas, which also has giant toroid magnets surrounding the whole system. And they're so strong, they pull on those charged particles, causing them to bend, which is how they make those beautiful pictures that you see in the news. The way we have, uh, we have to measure the energy of the particle is not to measure how, how much energy it uh, loses during the, the trajectory, but actually all the, 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 the muon spectrometer, so this huge uh, system of atlas, uh, is uh, e in, a, in a magnetic field and the particles are charged, so muons are charged, so they are bent uh, uh, by traveling into a magnetic field. So essentially what we measure is the bending of the, of the particle and measuring the bending uh, we can measure the, what we call the transverse momentum which is essentially the energy. Whew, okay, so we got a lot of stuff going on. Let's just take a second and let that sink in. Not only are these detectors engineered to the electron scale and then hand-built, but also the detectors are the largest MicroMegas systems ever constructed. Before this, the largest MicroMegas was about the size of three Domino's medium pizzas. And this one is going to be 1,200 square meters, almost as large as a hockey rink. If I think to the small uh, detector prototypes we were uh, working with uh, 10 years ago, and I'm talking about things like uh, 10 by 10 centimeters squares, really, really small. Now that we are really building, it, it, it became a reality to build uh, such a huge detector based on this type of, uh, of technology. This is really uh, amazing. amazing. Once they're assembled, the panels will be installed into the new small wheel sections, along with the STGC detectors, and the whole apparatus can be moved onto a truck, into a shaft, above Atlas, and lowered into place 100 meters underground. Which is where I got to go next! I was so excited. Here you see the detector. It has several layers. It looks like an onion. Several layers, and each layer has a very specific task in the detection of the particles. That's Rachel Maria Avramido, detector physicist at CERN. Sorry, it's loud. It turns out massive science projects aren't that quiet. At this level, it's at the center. We have two beams in opposite directions that collide at the center of the detector. The idea is that the energy is transformed into matter. We have the production of new particles, which didn't exist before. Okay, you see that? That's the old small wheel called the muon small wheel or muon spectrometer. You can really see the layers we were talking about here. For the muon spectrometer, we need different layers because actually when we have the signal induced, we have points inside each cube and we need many of them in order uh, to have a good track reconstruction. That's why you see several layers. 
If all this coordination and construction works out, there will be no way a subatomic particle could escape that room undetected. It will also be operating with 10 times more collisions than before, because remember, that's why we're doing all this, because they're gonna make so much more physics than the high luminosity LHC that the physics that they're gonna physics has to physics better. But that's not the only reason we're upgrading. Because eventually, like any machine, it wears out, and they would have had to update things. See, Atlas was completed in 2008 and has since experienced thousands of billions of atomic collisions at huge energies and, you know, parts wear out over time. Um, I guess one of the examples is like we have this instrumentation that's like a very thin wire. It's like 30 microns of carbon. It's like thinner than a hair. Mm -hmm. And actually, if you are around it, you could even breathe it. Like you don't even see it. We use this, this uh, wire to go through the beam and then like this we can measure basically the transverse structure of it. Protons are hitting this, this wire and we use it like every day, every day of operation for a lot of months and for years and years. And then if we bring this, um, let's say, wire to an electronic microscope and we look at it, we can see that there's where the beam has been passing. We see that there's like atoms missing, like it's, wow. it's, it's thinning. Does that not blow your mind? It's like atoms shaving little pieces off of this actual physical structure. So cool. So that is why we need the new small wheel. It's a better camera to see the muons in this particle accelerator. It's just one small piece of a small piece of the small piece of the giant high luminosity LHC upgrade going on now at your local Terran particle accelerator. <laughs> we didn't talk about logistics, the actual design, the sourcing of materials, the conception phase of everything. That someone had to think this up. Someone was at a pub somewhere and thought, huh, what if we, it's out there and it's amazing. Technology has improved, so we're working on improving our detectors and preparing for this higher luminosity, preparing for the idea that we're gonna have many more collisions. And that changes things, it's a game changer. It means that our detectors have to work even faster than before. And by faster, you know, we're talking about moving from you know, 40 million <laughs> collisions per second to, to even more. We're able to, to take a, a 100 megapixel camera that can take photographs 40 million times a second and go to even, even higher rates and be able to improve the precision of the, the images that we're taking. And, and that's uh, it's insane when you think about it, but, but that's what we do. But after all that, I bet you just have one really, you know, just burning question, right? Why is it blue? Stick around, because I asked. Speaking of sticking around, I don't have this beard for any specific reason. It's more like I'm lazy and beards, they grow on you. But I do like a good shave. Plus, you gotta take care of your skin. Grooming, very important. So I like to use face lotion and a nice sharp blade when I do shave up the old neckaroo, which is why I enjoy Dollar Shave Club. They get it. Right now, if you wanna support Uno Dose of Trace and support your general hotness, then you can get a whole starter kit from Dollar Shave Club for only five bucks. I think the black pepper shampoo smells great and the lavender, woof, really nice, but they have a lot of products. If you buy more, you save more. All you have to do is go down into the description. There's a link there, dollarshaveclub.com slash trace. And each of these kits is only five bucks. You'll also support the making of this show, my ability to travel to Geneva to make this episode, and my ability to look fly. <laughs> Check out the link in the description. Please give it a try. It's only five bucks and thanks. Okay, fam, the blue. What's up with it? All right, I think, okay, I think that the, the color was not chosen because of something special. I think because of the old wheel color, which is blue, we thought we have to continue with exactly the same color and to not be confused where we are in the, 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 the Atlas detector because we have plenty of systems. So we have to identify with, uh, with the color. It's a nice blue. Yeah, could be lighter or darker. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, I guess. But thanks for watching the second part of my CERN mini series. I do have more footage. I could make a third part, but I didn't want to overwhelm you. So if you liked this, let me know here in the comments or over on Twitter. Please consider clicking subscribe. You can also click the bell and subvert the algorithm. It'll actually notify you when new episodes get posted. If you like this one, I guarantee you will like more of them in the future. I hope you learned something. I know I did. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the future.